so I'm going to take this texture again. Just going to rotate it. Just going. Uh, I'm going to use that to place it on the back of, um, to be next to the wall. This will give us a little bit nice variation of texture and some like it there is some accumulation of dirt there. Now just place it uh, like uh, right next to the edge of the texture and just trying different overlay modes. Uh, see which one is better, it's better. Probably I go with hard light or multiply on lower opacity, but hard light seems nice. So I'm just going to duplicate that piece again, get rid of any sharp edges. So merging those two, duplicating it again to create a bigger one. Now we can we can test uh, test the texture. So I said the I'm not sure about the overlay mode again. I'm just trying to multiply again. So I'm going to try with that. So let's uh, save the texture. Let's create a new material. So right click hold to assign new material, new material X. And let's uh, load the texture. So let's uh, rename it uh, ground material. Click on the checkered icon and create the texture filtering off. Select and select the texture. This take a little bit more while to load up well, because of the its size. Now it can load up. You can see it in the viewport. Also, you can see that the grime is um, accumulated even in front of the steps, which won't be the scenario in real life. I'm tuning down the reflectiveness again. And I always say that the reflectiveness and glossiness uh, be um, in ratio of 1. So if the reflectiveness is uh, 0.750, um, so the glossiness should be 2.250. Uh, so when they're uh, combined, it uh, equals to 1. So just test render it. and. The main problem is the grime that's accumulated in front of the steps, uh, steps, which when they're in real use, uh, the grime would be much less noticeable in front of there. So just created two loops, just to see where the the grime that I need to remove uh, is positioned. So just um, getting the reference from those two lo edge loops. I'm creating two um, ru uh, rulers uh, in Photoshop. Just uh, hit Ctrl and R to bring up the rulers. So just hitting undo several times. Just remove those each loops because they're unnecessary geometry. I'm starting deleting that gram in front of the steps. So now I can remove the roller, just drag it up and hit Ctrl and R to hide it. So again, um, the multiply didn't work too much, too great, so I'm just going to with uh, the hard light. And now I'm going to test that now. But before that, uh, we need uh, to create the other map 
but this time instead of a bump map we're going to create a displacement map because the bump map won't be sufficient to create enough details uh, on the ground so again I'm going to create a, uh, to desaturate the uh, two layers duplicate them and desaturate them and when I'm going to adjustment levels now I'm going to create the black and white image that they need so when I'm moving the sliders most of the stones are uh, getting uh, black and the space between them is getting white so I'm just trying to do that for all the stones as close as possible but because um, again again the displacement map that we're going to create is going to be act like a bump map so we need to have the stones white and the space between them black so I just inverted the texture so the white stones push up the geometry so the displacement displacement map actually creates a geometry on render time in contrast with the bump map with which uh, just fakes a bumpy looking surface just trying to tweak the texture a little bit more and if you find the texture a little bit too sharp when we do some of those adjustments you can apply a slight Gaussian blur on top of it just to refine the details the grime the grime looks good as it is even I can Not sure if it's necessary at all, but I can leave it um, probably tune down the opacity. So let's leave it at that and save it as a ground displacement. Uh, sorry, not bump. I'm going to rename the file just in a second. So let's rename it up to displacement, not bump. So let's get inside my again. Let's uh, not go to the bump map, but to the Mia material shader group. This is right on the left side of the actual material settings and under displacement material we can click the checkered icon and again insert our, our file texture if you don't see the shader group you can go to the hyper shade select uh, the material and expand all the connection uh, nodes of the material and then you should be able to see the shader group the way we tweak the power of the Of the displacement is through the alpha gain in the texture node and now it's when it's set to one you can see that the displacement is t too much for what we need so I'm going to place it to point 0.1 see that uh, how it looks looks much more subtle and better and it's the look that we need I'm just reloading the main color texture. Probably let's try a different number of the displacement map. So under color balance, let's try 0.2 with a new color texture. It looks a little bit more better. And as you can see that the ground pushes up the jump uh, the joint ground pushes up so we need to bring up the trash can and the bench a little bit up. 
So the next thing we're going to dash uh, and the final one is the trash can. So this is the UV snapshot of the trash can.